Creeping, lurking, waiting, hiding, disguised, and stealthy. Lures, traps, and finally, attack. Ambush predators strike from their killing position with deadly force and speed. These snipers of the animal kingdom are always built for the kill. They're out there somewhere. Hiding in the shadows and undergrowth. Watching and waiting for a chance to strike. They are cryptic killers. They may use lures as bait. or traps to hide in. Some use camouflage. Others, a silent approach. They all wait and watch before they strike their deadly blow. As the sun sets over the Amazon jungle, night prowlers emerge to hunt in the shadows. The Marge is a superb tree climber and a typical cat. Solitary, specialized, and thoroughly lethal. Cat's eyes are designed to work well in low light. They're six times more sensitive than our own. The whiskers are so accurate they can detect air currents around objects. This means that cats can navigate in pitch black. Cats are excellent climbers. The Marge has specially adapted claws and ankle joints, so it can climb head first down vertical trees just like a squirrel. This cat is so flexible that it can hang from tree limbs by one hind foot and rotate its ankle through 180 degrees. All cats have a mirror-like membrane on the back of the eye called the tapetum. This enhances light, giving cats high-tech night vision. Large paws cushion sounds as the marge creeps around the forest floor. The cat pauses from time to time, listening. The rat is killed with a short, sharp bite to the back of the neck. The rough tongue is covered with tiny hooks that scrape flesh from the bone. Margays rely on stealth, tracking and stalking skills to capture prey by surprise. You couldn't get more different environments than jungle at night and African grassland during the day. And yet cats thrive here too. The African wildcat is a typical feline hunter. Excellent eyesight and keen hearing make it a top predator. The wildcat waits, motionless. Its body low to the ground, its ears pointing towards its victim. If the prey is not aware of its attacker, the cat moves even closer. Mm -hmm. 
When the cat senses that the moment is right, it transfers its weight onto its powerful rear legs and lunges forward toward the victim. The stalk, the crouch, and then the rush into the kill is a tried and tested hunting pattern. This cat's hunting doves. It waits for its chance, still and silent. Doves are easily scared and quick in flight. So the wildcat has adapted to catch them mid-flight by some astonishing feats of gymnastics. The cat's ability to correct itself mid-jump means that it's very agile in the air and ensures that it almost always lands on its feet. Its shock-absorbing limbs prevent muscle damage from repeated acrobatics. Somewhere else in Africa lurks a big cat who hunts bigger prey. The leopard never changes its spots. It's always on the lookout for a kill. The leopard's a versatile predator and hunts by night and by day. Its front paws carry five lethal claws that are among the deadliest in the animal world. The spots break up the predator's solid shape, fooling the prey's eye. During the ambush, the leopard silently approaches, lifting its paws clear of the undergrowth to minimize noise. The leopard's hearing is five times as sensitive as a human's. It homes in on its prey, calculating the optimal distance from which to strike. Once within about 10 meters or 30 feet of the prey, the leopard attacks, grabbing the unsuspecting animal by the throat and holding it until it dies. The leopard drags its prey towards cover as soon as possible. They can carry prey three times their own body weight into the treetops, an amazing feat of strength. This keeps it safe from scavengers like hyenas. Coming up next on Built for the Kill, a bizarre looking monster lurks in the Amazon's murky waters. Cryptic snakes break cover. Two savage reptiles go head to head. And flowers disguise a truly terrifying ambush killer.
blooming flowers are dinner invitations for visiting insects. Many flying insects search the countryside for flowers bearing sweet nectar. But these flowers aren't as innocent as they seem. They harbor a cryptic killer behind the folds of their petals. These crab spiders are camouflaged to match the flower in which they hide and hunt. Crab spiders don't spin webs to trap prey. Instead, they sit tight in ambush and wait for prey to come to them. They rest in the petals and remain motionless for long periods of time. Their front two pairs of legs extended in readiness. The legs are held in a crab-like position and they can move forward, backward or sideways. Crab spiders' tiny eyes serve mainly as motion detectors, an unusual high-tech advantage. Though their jaws are small and slender, Crab spiders inject potent poisons, which quickly immobilize their prey. They don't wrap their paralyzed victims in silk after biting, but simply suck them dry. Even venomous insects like wasps and bees are targeted. All the spider has to do is sit and wait, and the prey is caught before it even knows what's happened. The venom contains a mix of insect toxins, but the main component is an enzyme that dissolves tissue. As the inside of the prey is dissolved, the spider sucks up the solution through its mouth parts and discards the husk. The dark and mysterious waters of South America's rivers are home to some very dangerous killer reptiles. They're out there, lurking in the shadows. The spectacled caiman is a stealthy yet ferocious predator. Still water makes for ideal hunting grounds. Spectacled caimans have special sensory cells around their face. These are thought to detect approaching prey. Mechano receptors along the jaw can sense small pressure changes in the surrounding water.
spectacled caimans have up to 78 teeth, which are quickly replaced if they're lost tackling prey. Young caimans often eat much smaller prey, like mollusks, gradually eating bigger and bigger food as they grow. They have vertical, cat-like pupils, so they can see well in the dark. Their eyes and nostrils are high on their heads. The rest of the body can lie hidden under the water. Caimans also have a third eyelid, called a nictitating membrane, that protects their eyes underwater. fish swimming past the head of a caiman will fire the scent cells across its face. The caiman interprets the pressure waves from potential prey and identifies the exact location of its next meal. A lurking and calculating predator, the caiman is a true ambush killer. The tranquil waters of Europe's rivers hide a voracious predator. These sharp-toothed killers are often called freshwater sharks. This fish is superbly adapted for ambush. Long lengths of time waiting and fast, precise movements when prey is finally spotted. Even in strong currents. Pike use their excellent sense of smell to hunt. Set near the top of the head, the eyes are well adapted for spotting prey. Mottled coloration on the pike's sides help it blend into the weeds. The fins and the tail are used to produce sudden bursts of speed for braking and for maneuvering sideways. Dark upper coloration and lighter belly color makes the pike hard to spot from above and below. The body is torpedo shaped, streamlined for short fast bursts of speed. Hovering in the wings, the pike will wait and wait until a potential meal of just the right size and shape passes close by. The pike then tracks the prey by sight and smell until the time is just right for attack. When it strikes, this fish is fast. Its snake-like body can be bent into an S-shape. By quickly straightening out and using its broad tail and well-positioned fins, the pike is capable of incredible bursts of speed. A pike's head is long and the mouth flat like a duck's bill. They have many rows of sharp teeth that will quickly damage whatever they strike.
This is a stickleback. Its sharp fins make it difficult for the pike to swallow. This pike is trying to regurgitate its recent meal. Pike are solitary hunters, and they're not against cannibalism. Here, an adult pike has snatched an adolescent. Injuries along the victim's body show just how sharp the pike's teeth are. It doesn't take long to make a short meal out of its cousin. The murky waters of the Amazon River are home to even more amazingly camouflaged ambush killers. The Amazon is the largest river in the world. Thousands of colored fish dart about in the cloudy waters, stained by rotting leaves. Tetra have a lateral line running along their body. This senses vibrations and alerts the fish to approaching predators. But when predators are still, silent and invisible, they are almost impossible to detect. This leaf fish is watching and waiting for a likely looking tetra to enter the strike zone. And when it does, it's a very fast death for the tetra. But the muddy waters cloak an even weirder predator, with its own lightning-fast mouth. The Matamata is one of the most unusual-looking animals in the world. has a snorkel for a nose and leaf-like skin flaps covering its head and neck. These tufts and fringes break up the turtle's outline. Algae grows on the roughened shell, causing it to look like an old, encrusted rock. Matamata -mata use stealth and cunning to catch fish. They can feel vibrations and changes in the water pressure that tell them where food or a predator might be. Also sensing vibration and searching for movement, the tetra is always on the alert. But the matamata is busy looking like a pile of leaves, invisible to the tetra. Suddenly, the matamata strikes. The turtle thrusts out its head and opens its jaws as wide as possible. This acts like a vacuum cleaner. The prey and a large amount of water are rapidly sucked down the turtle's throat. The matamata snaps its mouth shut, expels the water slowly, and the tetra is swallowed whole. The entire strike takes a fraction of a second to complete.
this truly astonishing predator is really built for the kill. Coming up next on Built for the Kill, a spider has a surprise in store for unwary insects. This snake is death by name and nature. And we meet a python with a deadly squeeze. This spider has a cunning way of ambushing prey. Its long, thin, brown body mimics a twig. But this is a twig with a trap. As an unsuspecting insect passes beneath, the net-throwing spider lunges down and stretches a silken net over the victim. The blue net is the size of a postage stamp. Its coiled lines are designed to stretch over and entangle prey. Silk is spun out fast as the nimble spider constructs its net row by row. Once its net is complete, it attaches it to its front four feet and waits like a fisherman. The more the prey struggles, the more it gets imprisoned. Eventually, a poisonous bite will paralyze the entangled victim. Once the prey is still, the spider begins to prepare its packed lunch. The pre-digested victim is eaten at leisure. Honeybees are nature's gardeners. They fly from flower to flower, sipping nectar and collecting pollen. But something lies in wait for the honeybees. The Segestria spider is a voracious ambush killer. It lives out almost its entire life within its specially crafted tubular web. Segestria waits at the entrance with three pairs of legs pointing to the front. Lines of silk radiate out from the web in all directions. When an insect trips the wire, vibrations travel up the web. Sensory hairs on the spider's feet detect the movement. The spider is activated.
It grabs the bee head on and drags it into its woven lair. The bee's only defense is its sting. Which in this case is useless and gets stuck in the web. The torn sting continues to pump venom, leaving the bee defenseless. Once inside the tube, the spider begins the long process of killing and eating. It injects dissolving venom into its prey. As the bee slowly dies, the spider sucks up its internal organs through a special tube. Another husk for the graveyard. Deserts across the world are extremely dangerous places. Deadly snakes patrol the plains. This Australian Taipan is one of the most venomous of all. Death adders also pack a powerful punch. Death by name, death by nature. During the heat of the day, this snake searches for burrows or bushes where it can hide in the shade. Then at night, the Death Adder prepares for ambush. The Adder sits tight and waits for prey to approach. This skink can't resist tempting food, a wriggling worm. Except this isn't a worm, it's a lure. The skink is drawn to within striking distance. Death Adder strikes with amazing speed and accuracy. Large fangs deliver an extremely toxic venom. They also maneuver the skink head first into the mouth so that it can be swallowed with ease. Garter snakes spend all winter holed up together.
once spring breaks, they all go their separate ways and immediately begin to hunt. Their stripy brown bodies camouflage them well against the burnt grass background and break up their body shape in fresh grass. The forked tongue tracks prey by smell as they silently approach their victim. From the ambush, it strikes. The frog is swallowed alive. No venom or constriction are needed to make this notoriously aggressive snake built for the kill. Despite matching its muddy background, this frog is in grave danger. Something has locked onto it. Any one of these unlucky frogs may be targeted and stalked by a cryptic ambush killer. As green as its favorite hunting ground, grass. Grass snakes hunt anything from voles to bird's eggs, but frogs are their favorite food. They are non-venomous and rely on surprise and strength to catch and overpower their prey. Like the garter snake, the grass snake simply swallows its victims alive, its jaws able to stretch over prey up to three times as big as its own head. Firmly gripped between the snake's backwards pointing teeth, the prey cannot escape. Squeezing the victim along its throat, from mouth to stomach, the grass snake settles down to digest its meal. Nestling in the foothills of the Himalayas, there are snakes that can be hard to spot. With extremely thin, vine-like bodies, triangular heads and pointed snouts, these rear-fanged snakes are venomous slayers in the trees. They hang from branches gently swaying back and forth, waiting and watching the bird life. Silently, it slides towards its target, trying to pass itself off as a branch. Once the prey is caught, 
the vine snake somehow manages to swallow it upside down. Coming up next on Built for the Kill, savage reptiles go head to head in a fight to the death. These rocks hide a large and dangerous ambush killer. The African rock python lives all over southern Africa. As with many snakes, smell is the rock python's most important sense. Smells are picked up by its forked tongue, which flicks in and out of its mouth. The tongue picks up scent particles from the air and transfers them to two depressions in the roof of the mouth. This snake kills by constriction. It literally squeezes the life out of its victims. And it doesn't only hunt on land. The rock python is as good a swimmer as it is a killer. Its prey doesn't expect attack from beneath. The python makes the most of camouflage tactics by lurking in muddy water, watching. It smoothly glides up to its victims, then lies in wait. Heat-sensing organs in its upper and lower jaws detect warm-blooded prey. It strikes and tries to pull the struggling bird underwater. The python's deadly coils tighten each time the prey breathes out until no more breaths are possible and the heart's pumping action is disrupted. The bird is suffocated and then swallowed. But the snake is not the only killer in this lake. It's being watched by a monster. A forked tongue. Powerful tail. And sharp claws. Make this lizard a heavyweight killer. The Nile monitor is aggressive and will eat practically anything it can fit in its mouth. As the snake and monitor go about their daily business, both are unaware of the approaching danger of each other. Once they've entered each other's territory, a tremendous battle ensues. The monitor gets a good grip on the snake's neck with its powerful jaws. Meanwhile, the snake attempts to constrict the giant wriggling lizard. Neither gives in as they continue the battle. The snake seems to get a good grip on the lizard's neck. The lizard begins to suffocate. 
but maintains its iron-locked grip on the snake's neck. Until it can't hang on anymore and finally dies. The snake swims off victorious. Cats are typical ambush killers, creeping, waiting, and pouncing. Ambushes are enhanced by sophisticated camouflage. Traps, nets, and stealth are also used. But the final strike is always lightning fast and very powerful. Speed, strength, and agility make ambush predators built for the kill.